And then there's a big question about what constitutes World War III. With the start of the, of the, uh, with, with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, or you can even go back to say like the US backed ousting of Yanukovych in Ukraine, whatever you want. I, I mean, these things can all be re reduced. To, you can go way back in time. But with the conflict, the hot conflict, you've got prominent people in Europe saying this is World War III already. Now you add into the mix what will likely be the most dramatic and egregious military escalation from Israel into Gaza that we've ever seen and may result in the end of Gaza. I mean, the, the, the videos that are coming out of buildings being leveled, it's it's brutal. They're saying this is our 9-11. This could be World War Three. I mean, look, I know everybody's always like, oh, oh, you're being sensationalist by saying World War Three. I will just say this. For all I know, tomorrow, everybody stops. There's a there's tears. Some, you know, profit emerges. Who knows? And everyone stops fighting and they're like, I can't believe we fought. And then they all hug and it's like rainbows. OK, for all for all we know, that happens, even though the conflict's been going on for generations, if not millennia, maybe. But if China invades Taiwan and seizes and, and tries to take it right now, then I think it's fair to say, ob like, objectively, like, OK, World War Three, we've got these massive superpower involved hot conflicts popping up all over the globe. And even then, maybe there's still fair. To, to, it's still fair that, that there would be some argument against it. No, maybe it's just regional conflict, right? If this does devolve into the U.S. mobilizing, Russia mobilizing, China mobilizing into an actual, easily discernible World War Three with front with a front line, a Western front, they will look back historically, and this will be a part of that war, right? So uh, when yeah. when when France Ferdinand died, no one said that's it. World War One just start. World War One's on everybody. We postdated it. We right. said, oh, that was the start. You exactly. Know, I exactly. kind of get the vibe that it was 9-11 is what, is what ca catapulted <clears throat> us into the age of world chaos. I don't know. Uh, look, there's been, there's been, uh, there was Desert Storm. There's, there's a whole bunch of conflicts between the U.S. And, and, and other countries, and it never ended. I mean, after the cold, before, during the Cold War, we had a whole bunch of wars and conflict. Mm -hmm. It's not stopped. There was a period where it was a little quieter, but there was still Afghanistan yeah. and Iraq. And one in World War One and Two was like the same war. There's that interwar period where Germany was just ste seething because half the or part of the country had been stripped away and given to Poland, and those native G Germans that were now under the control of the Poles were being executed and genocided, and the Germans were like, you know cast us belly for war we need to take our land back and it, it was just like one big war with like 10 years of like quiet time yeah and it, i mean it, that's probably true of all conflict in world history of all time right like we say a war ends but does it really because the fallout right. is what sets up the next one i mean that's going to be true that's obviously true now. it's true now that's how we got here and it's also will be true forever right we i, I love the idea that we live in peace but ultimately someone is a loser when you live in peace there's always going to be tension there's the one of the arguments they're putting forward right now is that 75 years ago Israel seized uh, Israeli Israeli militants and militias seized land from Palestinians. It's like okay, like, I get it. You know, uh, people were kicked out of their homes 75 years ago. I don't see how that justifies kidnapping and murdering Germans. You know, like that. There's that video going around of that tattoo artist who was dancing at the festival, and there are people in New York celebrating that hipsters at a festival got taken. And the guy laughs and says, I'm sure they're doing fine now. You know, he knows they were all murdered. They were all murdered. Their, their, their dead bodies paraded around. Dude, you want to talk about war and conflict? Fine. But like, if, if they were really trying to say, like, take back their homes or tear down the fences of an open air prison, which by all means, make all these arguments. I don't see how they're like, we've, we've escaped the prison. Quick, go kill civilians. Like, imagine there's a dude who claims he was wrongfully jailed and he's in prison. And he's like, I shouldn't be here. I'm innocent. I was forced in here by corruption and tyranny. I'm a political prisoner. And then he breaks out and then he runs straight for some 20 year old woman and just beats her to death. You'd be yeah, like, no. dude, you should have been in prison. I think that a lot, the majority, probably a grand majority of the people in Palestine and in, in, in Gaza, whatever you want to call it, they, they call it, some people call it Gaza, some people call it Palestine, whatever. No, are, no, no, are, are, Gaza is the strip. It's Palestine, what's left over of Palestine, basically. And, and the West Bank as well yeah. as Palestine. So they're not violent. They're just stuck and, and they're trying to live. But then there's a militant, very angry small group of militant activists, Hamas and others, you know, that are willing to kill and are, are creating a situation where these civilians are now in the line of fire. 